The only people who don't want to disclose the truth are people with something to hide. Let's just get down to brass tacks, and we're going to take a breath and take our time because uh, you, you know you and I talk a lot, and and I've been on radio programs, you've been on radio programs. We both do a lot of interviews on this Obama fraud case, and and, and there's just some amazing stuff going on. We've got some updates. WND.com they just did a, 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 a expose, a piece where they had an exclusive interview with Congressman Stockman, so we're going to talk about that. I was on a radio show the other night, um, uh, and and for 45 minutes, and one of the Obots called up and uh, just went off about, you know, we've got all this information. We found a Xerox machine that'll do the same thing. It'll produce the same anomalies. And Mike Zulo won't tell us anything. And Mike Zulo won't tell us anything about Reed Hayes. He won't tell us anything. And I think I chapped him off, Mike, because when it came my turn to talk, I just said, well, who are you that Mike Zulo should tell you anything? Now, <laughs> I don't know if you feel the same, but Mike, what, what, what's your response to these obots, in my opinion, these nobodies, these irrelevant little people running around crying on national talk radio about how you won't tell them anything? And you're a professional criminal investigator in a criminal case getting information before Congress, but they're whining because you won't tell them what you know. Well, Carl, I, I think they're delusional. I, I think they believe I'm telling you. that they are some vessel of authority somewhere. I don't know in what stratosphere, but I don't owe them anything. I have never engaged them in two years. I don't really pay a lot of attention to them. Right. And what little I do know of them, aside from the identities of a few and one that I am intently focused on now, yeah. Um, it really just seems to me to be nothing more than a big disinformation campaign. It goes beyond even misinformation. It is disinformation. And, and for definition, you know, it's false information that is deliberately and a lot of times covertly spread in order to influence public opinion or to obscure the truth. Right. And that to me is a, about what it is. So to even deal with them, is, as far as I'm concerned, in brain damage. I don't see any reason to do it. Right. And, and I don't either. And, and that's why I'm not even going to... Some of them give names and initials and all that. I'm not even going to give them that kind of publicity over this radio program. Um, in fact, one of them... One of them I, somebody sent me a blog where one of them wrote something about my show and said, it, it's a radio show, kind of. And then he said, you ought to come over to my my blog show or something like that. And I'm thinking, a radio show, kind of? I mean, we have a national and international audience. We get calls from all over the nation, and this guy wants us to come to his blog because it's bigger than Freedom Friday. I mean, they are absolutely ever-loving out of their delusional minds. I mean, they are absolutely mentally challenged. Well, I, I know the show that you're referring to. That's like the 1950s party line. Yeah. You know, they should just sit around in their feety pajamas and talk to each other. <laughs> I'm telling you. I've got an image now. I wish you hadn't have said that. <laughs> hey, anything I could do to help. I know. Yeah, I appreciate it. <laughs> well, listen, let me just do this. I, I'm going to be very careful here because I will not divulge um, criminal investigation information that, that I know about. And, I, and, and you know, you're the one doing it, so I know you're not. But, but since there was this lengthy conversation, let me just give a... a, a, a Oh, just a surface understanding for our listeners about this Xerox machine thing. So I was on the air. This guy calls up this Obama bot, and he makes this allegation. He says, we have found, we have got a Xerox machine. He gave the serial number and all that, the make and model, and said it will produce the same anomalies that's on the PDF that came on the White House website, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And he said, so, so therefore, we've basically disproven the whole uh, Zulo uh, investigation. Now, again, I'm not going to give away the details of what we know and don't know and what you've done and haven't done and yada, yada, yada. But my response was, because of what I know, I said, I will not give any details of the criminal investigation, but I can say this. That allegation that's just made about the Xerox machine, it is of no concern to the Arpaio investigation. I, I said Zulo and Arpaio are miles down the road ahead of that. And, I mean, if that's what they think is the golden bullet, they're going to be sorely disappointed. Did I answer that correctly, and, and should we say anything else? Is there anything else you want to say, or is that just kind of where it needs to be? Or if I said something wrong, correct me. No, you answered it the way I would answer it. It is absolutely nothing of concern to us. It is not exculpatory on any level. 
and there isn't anything that I'm going to say about it. Right. You know, if these people think they have exculpatory evidence, you know, send signed That's affidavits right. with your computer files and the experts that did the analysis. Right. And we'd be more than happy to look at it. But don't disseminate this nonsense over the Internet and think that I have some obligation to you because I don't. That's right. And that's the thing I kept trying to get across on this radio program the other night to them. I said, look, I said, you guys, and I said, I'm not trying to be personally ugly towards you because I don't know you as people. I said, but as far as the scope of this investigation goes, you guys are nothing. You are, you are nobodies. I mean, you're American citizens, and you can call up and express your concern. But as far as demanding that Zulo and Arpaio over the radio turn over the details of their criminal investigation. I said, Zulo and Arpaio are dealing with congressmen. They're dealing with a poten potential pending congressional investigation and people going to prison. They are professional lawmen, you know, decades for you, 50 years for Arpaio. I said, why would these guys feel like they got to, over the radio, turn over their criminal investigation? I said, you guys are delusional. I mean, oh, they just went off. They just, they screamed and they whined and they cried, Mike. It was, it was unbelievable. But the bottom line is, Mike, if, if I'm correct, and if I'm incorrect, um, then straighten me out. But, but you guys are way down the road ahead of this Xerox machine thing. You're aware of it. You're aware of every detail of their allegations. You guys have done your thing. You're way beyond that. And your case does not rest on that, nor does it really rest totally on the PDF. I mean, there's just so much to this that people don't know. You've got three to 400 pages of criminal investigation stuff. Am I right about all of that? Well, Carl, you know, you know better than anyone because you and I have become very dear friends and you're a confidant. You know, as far as this investigation is concerned, and if these people think that they have the holy grail, I have, uh, you know, I have a bridge to sell them. Yeah, <laughs> if it's not right, no, it, it is just not. I mean, that's that's all I'm going to say. I, for fear that I might slip up and say more than I should, and that's what they want. But they're they're not going to get it from me, and I know they're certainly not going to get it from you. Um, now, let let me do this, Mike. Um, I want to give a shout out. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to come back and I'm going to talk to you about Congressman Stockman and what's going on and what he's talking about legislation and congressional investigations and the WD article. But before we do, and I want to give a shout out, and Mike, if you want to join in, feel free, but I want to shout out to Mike Volin. I want to thank this guy. What a great American he is. He has a website called Where's Obama's Birth Certificate.com. This guy's been working for several years on this, like I have, and he He's been right, he's right alongside with Mike Zulo and Sheriff Arpaio and really, really being just such a gracious gentleman. He's got this website. He's got a thing called the Sheriff's Kit. You can go to his website, wheresobamasbirthcertificate.com. His followers and his listeners, because he's got a blog talk radio program, they are just piling up. Uh, people uh, w who are um, uh, getting this sheriff's kit. The sheriff's kit is the, the affidavit that Mike Zulo uh, filed with the Alabama Supreme Court. It's videos. It's a, they'll put it. They'll send it to you on CD so that you can sit down with your congressman, make appointments, get it to your congressman, show them the the, the, the video evidence, show them this affidavit, and and we're making headway because of Mike Volin. There are congressmen that are opening their doors across the nation to constituents. They're looking at the evidence. They're seeing it, and some of them are responding. So I, I just want to say, Mike Volin, where's Obama's birth certificate dot com? God bless you guys. Thank you, uh, Mike. I know you've been on the show a couple times. Do you have anything to add to that? Well, actually, I had a cup of coffee with Mike just last week. Um, Good. He stopped by in Phoenix with his wife. And Good. I got to tell you, Carl. I mean, it, it's they're just wonderful Americans. Yeah. Mike isn't looking for fame, fortune. He isn't making any money. Right. By doing what he's doing, they just love this country, right? And they want this country back. And it's people like Mike that make this all worth it for me, right? I, I, this is a daunting task, and 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 I know that there's a level of appreciation out there that I probably can't even conceive of at this point. <laughs> I know, I know. Well, listen, you know the old the old poem, "Miles to go before we sleep." We've got a few more miles to go before you get to sleep, Mike. But uh, but listen, you, you're, you're way down the road. Uh, keep hanging there. America's counting on you, man. I mean, I mean, really, you and Sheriff Arpaio, and all of this massive investigation you've got going, and the people that you employ in that investigation. I mean, you're America's last hope on this. I mean, you guys are holding the goods 
on on the White House, and and it goes it goes to the forged birth certificate. But as you and I know, based upon all that's been uncovered, it goes so much deeper than that. It, it's so dark, it's so sinister, and you've got all this stuff, and uh, and I mean, this, this is huge stuff. Mike Volin is involved. Blog Talk Radio, Where's Obama's Birth Certificate? dot com. People all over the nation, sheriffs kits. They're downloading it. They're getting with their congressmen. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to talk about what Congressman Stockman's doing about what the article with WND and their interview. Mike Zulo, our guest this afternoon. Mike Zulo, thanks for being with us. I want to disclose the truth for people with something to hide. 